Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hunky Vape. I'm your host, DJ Alex. And today we're going to be taking a look at the humble disposable vape and the new synthetic nicotine regulations passed in the omnibus spending bill. Ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the humble disposable in a blue slushy flavor. If you know me at all, you know that blue slushy and blue raspberry are my favorite vaping flavors. And this contains 5% of tobacco free nicotine, meaning there is absolutely no tobacco derivative whatsoever in this product. And it is completely legal for sale in the United States but only for the next couple of weeks because the omnibus spending bill just regulated synthetic nicotine under the FDA's purview to determine if it's appropriate for the protection of public health. So first, I'm going to open this up and review it because I've gone and purchased a bunch of these devices and a bunch of these products for review they're in the transit system right now, waiting to get to my house so I can do the review on it. But I think it might have all been for naught. More wasted money because the FDA is not going to be able to handle the PMTA applications for all of these products that is now required by law. But we'll get to that later. Here we go, beautiful packaging, completely sealed. I've used Humble Juice before in my vapes. Great flavor, not everybody carries them, but it's a good product. So if you're a smoker and you wanna quit smoking and Blue Slushy is your flavor, well, Let's find out if this disposable is any good and does provide the flavor that we need to enjoy our vaping experience more than we would lighting up cigarette to burn. All right, very simple device, 3000 puffs is this device. Same type of seal that we saw in the last disposable I've, I reviewed. No charging port, nothing to mess with. Just a simple device for you to enjoy. Nice. That does taste like the blue slushy I used previously in a different video. Awesome. And if this was just a review on this, well, the video would pretty much be over because it does produce a blue slushy flavor. It gives you 5% tobacco-free nicotine to stay away from deadly combustible cigarettes and the product works great. So I would stop the recording now normally and go use this for a while and then come back and give you my final thoughts to see if this thing actually lasted 3000 puffs or thereabouts. However, the world we live in today is not so simple. And everybody and their brother wants to get on their high moral ground and protect us from the big tobacco companies that are keeping us addicted to cigarettes. Which by the way, there's a federal law prohibiting them from ever going away. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard that right. There is a federal law that prohibits the government from banning all cigarettes, all smokeless tobacco products, all little cigars, all cigars other than little cigars, all pipe tobacco, all roll your own products, or requiring the reduction of nicotine yields of a tobacco product to zero. 
the secretary is prohibited from taking such actions under this chapter. What chapter are we talking about? U.S. 21 U.S. Code 387G, Tobacco Product Standards. This was just amended in the Federal Omnibus Spending Bill along with other laws. So let's take a look at the actual laws the way they are now and see what changed. If you'll open up your Federal Omnibus Spending Bill to page 1,861 out of 2,741, well, you're going to find Division P, Health Provisions, Title I Public Health. And under Subtitle B, you'll easily find Synthetic Nicotine. And the law clearly states now that the FDA has authority over products containing nicotine from any source whatsoever except food. In other words, what it clearly reads now is, the term tobacco product means any product made or derived from tobacco or containing nicotine from any source that is intended for human consumption, including any component, part, or accessory of a tobacco product, except for raw materials, other than tobacco used in manufacturing a component part or accessory of a tobacco product. And most people are content with just reading that section of this and leaving it go. However, I'm not that kind of person. I wanna know exactly what the heck they're talking about. So let's take a look at the rest of this because it doesn't end on that page and find out what else has been changed by this law. Section B, applicability to certain products. Section 901B of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, 21 U.S.C. 387A slash B, is amended by adding at the end of the following, this chapter shall also apply to any tobacco product containing nicotine that is not made or derived from tobacco. Essentially, everything is now captured as a tobacco product, even if it doesn't contain any tobacco derivative whatsoever. The effective date of this will be 30 days after President Biden signed it into law. So the clock is already ticking. For the next 22 days or so, everything in the old way that it was written is in effect. But 30 days after President Biden signed this omnibus bill into law, these changes now come into full force, which means this product, because it is now considered a tobacco product, because it contains nicotine, even though it's not from tobacco, must file for a PMTA. And they have 30 days to file for a PMTA after this law goes into effect. Essentially meaning that the vaping industry has 60 days to once again meet the statutory regulatory requirements of the Food and Drug Administration to get their product approved and to get the FDA to determine if this product is appropriate for the protection of public health. And we hear that, throw, that term thrown around constantly in all different sources. But the question is, where does that come from? Well... We once again find ourselves back at 21 U.S. Code 387G, Tobacco Product Standards. This section of the law determines what regulations are appropriate and how are these regulations appropriate and what is the Secretary of the Food and Drug Administration supposed to do to regulate these products appropriately. And if you look through this section, you will find it riddled with provisions that are appropriate for the protection of public health, including a provisions where appropriate for nicotine yields of the product, for the reduction or elimination of other constituents, including smoke constituents, or harmful components of the product, or relating to other requirements under subparagraph B. So let's get back to this new standards that were adopted in the omnibus spending bill. 
What's the effective date? We covered that, 30 days from the date of the enactment of this act. Transition period for all products with respect to a tobacco product that contains nicotine from any source other than tobacco and that was being marketed by the United States within 30 days after the enactment of this act. In other words, if you introduce a product today, you can fall under this clause. But you have to file a product, a PMTA product now, to be considered part of this. From a layperson's perspective, all this is doing is establishing a whack-a-mole situation. Because you and I both know that's exactly what happens in our society. When you pass a law that people don't agree with, they ignore it. And despite what their good intentions may be, all they're doing is setting up a black market environment that is no longer going to provide safe products to people. I'm not saying that all manufacturers are out there to you hurt people, but let's be realistic here. Because the burdensome regulations are now applying to every single thing that's out there, and technically the FDA has only approved these products, these are the products that the US FDA has granted marketing authorization orders as classified as new tobacco products. We have the Verb Discs, and Blue Mint, Choose Blue Mint, Green Mint, and Choose Green Mint. These products are no longer available for sale in the United States, but it's authorized for sale in the United States according to the FDA. We also have the View Solo and replacement cartridges with 4.8% nicotine content. But what we don't have is an actual vaping product of any kind whatsoever approved for marketing in the United States. Do you honestly think that the FDA is going to get the PMTA submission for products like this one and is going to get them completed in the next 60 days? My apologies, 90 days, because that's what, ha that's what they have to do. If you take a look at the wording in this law, we come to subsection F, technical achievability. Section 907B1 of the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act, 21 USC 387GB1 is amended by inserting before the period at the end of the following, including with regard to any differences related to the technical achievability of compliance with such standards for products in the same class containing nicotine not made or derived from tobacco and products containing nicotine made or derived from tobacco. By itself, when you read that section, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. However, when you actually take a look at 387G, we clearly find that the FDA must now consider the technical achievability of compliance, including any differences between synthetic nicotine and tobacco-derived nicotine. This change in the regulations requires the FDA to consider the fact nicotine is 100% pure when it's made from synthetic sources. While tobacco-grown nicotine may have residual pesticides, or who knows what? It essentially changes the compliance standards for all tobacco products. This is even more true when you factor in subsection two, other considerations. Did you know that the FDA must include countervailing effects of their regulations, such as the creation of a significant demand for contraband or other tobacco products that do not meet their requirements and significance of such demand when coming up with these regulations? The law specifically addresses creating a black market because of burdensome, unachievable regulations. So why hasn't some lawyer, some clever lawyer sued the FDA or used this argument in their proceedings to get a vaping product approved? If the FDA continues to drag their feet and not approve vaping products like this or like this, the writing is already on the wall. All of these products are out there because they help people quit smoking. Countless committed ex-smokers turned vape shop owners 
have already publicly stated that they will continue to sell vaping products. Millions of vapors refuse to go back to deadly combustible tobacco, regardless of what their government wants. And more importantly, it's morally reprehensible for the FDA to deny these ex-smokers access to a safer flavored product. These facts alone clearly demonstrate the consumer demand fueling black market vapes. And the only logical way for the FDA to move forward is to finally give market authorization for these products. This past week, I visited literally dozens of vape shops to find out what their plans are considering the omnibus bill that defines synthetic nicotine as a tobacco product. And that now the FDA is gonna require a PMTA for all of these products, despite not having approved or authorized, my apologies, authorized anything to date that helps these smokers stay away from deadly combustible tobacco. And would you be surprised to find out about 25% of the shops I visited had absolutely no fucking clue what the hell I was talking about. In one store, the employee literally said, well, my boss says that everything's okay, so I'm not worried about it. You realize everything in this building except for the products that have a stay from the federal courts are going to become illegal? And that's when the manager stepped in and explained to me that they're just a retail store. They're not a vape shop selling tobacco products. They are a retail store selling items bought from a distributor who handles all the paperwork and all the taxes and all the paperwork that needs to go to the ATF every single month. So the FDA and the ATF have nothing to do with them. There are over 8,000 dedicated vape shop owners across the United States. And according to the information that I recently learned, who knows how many shops flying under the radar because the existing regulations are already too ridiculous to comply with. Some shops are only selling zero milligram e-liquids. And then they're telling their customers to go next door to the gas station to buy nicotine capsules for their juice. I mean, they literally partnered with a gas station to get under the regulatory radar. You think that these places are just going to disappear or will this scenario become much more prevalent if the FDA continues with its march of denials to the legitimate law-abiding tobacco retailers? Some vape shops have gone and rebranded into full-blown head shops because, well, CBD has become legal, but nicotine is increasingly becoming illegal. Do you think any of these are gonna get caught? Do you think any of these are gonna stop selling their products to the customers that want these products? Half the shops I visited knew exactly what I was talking about. And they're worried about what's coming next. But they've been doing this for so long that they're just accustomed to flying by the seat of their pants. Almost all of these shops also have diversified that the products available for sale. So half the shop is CBD paraphernalia and the other half is mostly disposable vapes. You know, the number of hardware items like this, like mods and tanks and starter kits, they're only a fraction of what I saw just one year ago. Not surprisingly, these shops are back in their heyday or have actually surpassed their heyday financially. I'm not kidding you. The one shop I visited had 19 customers in the one hour that I spent there. And the owner said, it's like that from open to close every single day. The remaining stores that I visited 
revealed owners who know exactly what's going on. But frankly, they don't give a fuck anymore. They were beat down by the regulations when they first deemed all vaping products as a tobacco product. They were beat down by the Avali scare. They were beat down by the PMTA scare. They were beat down by COVID lockdowns. And despite all of that, they refused to give up. So now, they simply enjoy helping people and serving their growing customer count. They're gonna ride this out and ride this wave regardless of where it's going to take them. And to those of you that I visited, I wanna sincerely thank you for your gracious hospitality and your candor speaking about your very personal battle to stay in business. I could go on and on talking about their stories, but I know how long this video already is. So it's time to wrap this up. If you are a vapor who only gets things from your local shop, you need to go and talk to them to see what their plans are. These people rely on you just as much as you rely on them to keep you off of the stinkies. And if you're a hardcore vapor worried about how you're gonna continue vaping if your local shop closes, hit the subscribe button below and stay tuned for my next video. My 750 subscriber appreciation video, it's gonna be filled with the exact same vape shop hopping, retro vape mail, random e-liquid mixing, and some of the purchases I made while visiting these stores. I spent over $500 in these stores to support them and to look forward to having some fun enjoying the crafting aspects of vaping again. So until next time, have a great day. And remember, all you need is peace, love, and a hunky vape to stay away from deadly combustible tobacco. Have a great day, everyone.